Okay, hello everyone. All right, so we've seen how the GeoOption Paints show message dialog works, right? It, po it pops up some kind of dialog box displaying a message that we specify. All right, so in this video, we're going to look at G the GeoOption Paints show input dialog method. And that basically pops up on another dialog box. We create another dialog box that accepts input from the user that we can use for you know anything we want in our program, right? So we know that when we want to work with the GeoOption Pane, the first thing we have to do is import the GeoOption Pane class. Now we've talked that as we've talked about the class um, briefly, and again we'll, we'll go into the details of classes and object. But a class is basically a definition of properties and methods, or you can think of methods as operations that we can perform on objects that are going to be created from the, this class. Okay, objects are created from classes, and you know how the object look or some of the properties the object have and some of the things they can do all depend on the class because in the class is the, in the class is the definition of the properties and operations or methods operations that you can think of them as methods or they're, they're pretty much methods so in the class is the definition of properties and methods that objects created from that class are going to have in the future you can think of a class as a mother and you can think of Objects that are going to be created from the class as babies. Okay, <laughs> you, you can think of it that way. All right, so we need to import it, right? So I'm going to import it just like the previous video, and just like the way we also imported the scanner class. We're going to import the Geoption Pane class. So import Java X dot swing dot J option pane spelled exactly this way. Capital J, capital O, and then capital P. We are importing the Geoption Pane class located in the Java X dot swing package. Remember similar classes are grouped in packages in the Java API. So we are importing basically the location of this class, the Geoption Paint class. Now I mentioned that in the Geoption, with the Geoption Paint class, we don't necessarily we don't have to create an object from the class. We can apply the methods that are defined in the class directly on the class. So the way we kind of pop up pop out a dialog box that allows it allows the user to type in something is by calling the method called show input dialog. The previous one was a show message dialog. That just shows a message. Show input dialog will basically show a dialog, dialog box that allows us to accept inputs from the user. So we apply the method directly in the class. So we first of all have to use the name of the class, J option pane, exactly as that as it's spelled over here. Dot we are using the dot operator or the access operator to access some of the methods that are defined in the Geoption Pane class. Okay, we are applying a method, uh, and a method is simply, and again, we'll talk more about methods, one or more lines of code wrapped up together with curly braces and given a name. And when the name is used, or, or when it's called, when it's called over here, when it's used over here, the lines of code, code, um, or, or one line, or the, or the, line of, the lines of code, okay, are executed, pretty, pretty much. All right, so the method is called, show input dialog spelled using gamma case okay lower first letter is lowercase and, and every other words the first letter of every other word is capitalized okay dial um sorry d and since it's a method we need a parentheses semicolon the methods have these parentheses because they they can either accept information or what we term as arguments they can either accept arguments or not in this case it happens that the show input the, the show input dialog accepts arguments, and so we're going to pass those arguments in here. We're going to type them here or pass them here. We'll talk more about methods, so don't worry about these terms we're using. So what do you want? To, what 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 we are going to type in here basically is once this dialog box is displayed, we want to allow the user to type in something, right? But we want to tell the, tell the user what to type or a hint of what to type. It's like a label that says, okay, type in your name, right? And what we what is going to be displayed on that dialog box as, as the label or as, um, as the, dis you know, the question or description or whatever is goes in double quotation as a string in this uh, parentheses. So I can say something like, what is, or just, just say, please type in your name as a string. That's it, all right? Um, I'm going to compile this as it is now. And then let's run it to see what happens. It may take a couple of seconds. If it doesn't show up, just um, just 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 look down in your um, 
your um, taskbar, right? I think it's a taskbar, I believe, <laughs> on Windows, and or look at your dock on um, on Mac. Sometimes it may get off your screen like this. Just look here and then bring it back. So this is how it looks. Your label is, is displayed here. Please type in your name, and you can type in anything. The way we, the way we've written our code, nothing happens with what we've typed. Um, if I hit the cancel value, or the, sorry, the cancel button, um, a value called null, n n u l l n u l l, is returned. That's that's, that's like nothing is returned. Well, what I mean by returned is it's whatever the user types is going to be returned. It's going to be sent back to us to to take. All right. Uh, we'll talk more about methods and you use more about uh, use more of those terms and explain them. But whatever the user types. Whether it's nothing or or null is going to be returned back to us and, and for us to take or to for us to get, right? Or use for something. So for now, we, our code is not done. I want to talk a bit more about how it works. I'm going to cancel this. And null is returned, right? Null is returned. We didn't use it, so nothing really happened. It's, it's just thrown away. So anytime you call the uh, show input dialog method. This is going to be displayed to the user, right? And the, the, as you saw, there was a text box. Now, the user is going to type in something. Whatever the user types, okay, is going to be returned as a string. Whatever the user types is going to be returned as a string, even if it's a number. But don't worry about it. We'll fix, we'll fix it, and we'll talk more about it. For now, let's assume the user is going to type in a string. Even if the user types in, I mean, a number. I mean, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Even if the user types in, types in a number, that number is not going to be returned as a number. It's going to be returned or given back to us as a string. Everything the user types, strings, numbers, whatever, it's, go it's going to be returned as a string. And so if whatever the user is going to be typed is going to be returned as a string, then we need a place to store it, right? And if we are storing the user's input, which is always going to be returned as a string, then we need a string variable to, to, to get that response. And so I'm going to I'm going to declare a string variable. I'm going to call it user response. Something like that, right? And then user response is going to receive whatever is being returned. So when it's returned, think of it as it works with this. It's done accepting the user's input. It's returning it back to us. It's returning it back. It's returning back the user's response to us. So we're going to store it here. If we don't have this, then it's returned. It's still returned, but it's 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 thrown away because we don't have anything here to accept it. It's it's like it's saying, "I'm done. Where are you? You there's nothing here to accept it." But in this case, I'm going to undo. We have user response here. When it's done, when the user is done typing, whatever the user types, which is always going to return as a string, is going to be stored in user response. And so the user response is going to be here. When we're done, we can print it. Now, so far we are used we are used to system .out printer, but no, no, no. We are dealing with the G option pane now. Remember, we learned about the G option pane's sh uh, show message dialog. We can use that, so we can have a dialog box that accepts user you, the user information, and we can have an, another dialog box that displays it, right? So we learned that with, with the G option pane's uh, sh show message dialog, we had to use the name of the class, so G option pane sh show message dialog this way and it's also a method so we type in what we want to display on that dialog box here we can type in a regular string you can type in anything or we can also pass in a variable this happens to be a string we can pass in user response here and so after the user has typed in something whatever the user type is going to be stored as a string over here and we want to display that string using the G option panes show message dialog okay the option pane dot sh uh, show message dialog is the, is the line of code we're going to use to do that let's compile this okay we have an error let's kind of let's fix it first so cannot find symbol mess uh, method show message dialog let's see the option pane dot show message dialog did I misspell misspell something let's see hold on one second let's just quickly go through this um J option pane dot show message dialog. It looks right to me. I don't know what's affecting it. Oh, 
oh, okay, I know what it is. And I talked about it, right? And sometimes I, I it skips me. Sometimes I, I miss this. Remember, remember, I said the the the, the, the show message dialog takes in a couple of arguments, right? And it's going to be a dialog box that's going to be, you know, it's going to be positioned on the screen. Remember, we passed in the arguments null, right? So I'm going to compile this back. And so if you got this, great, great, you know, great, All right? So remember when we were talking about the the, the show message dialog. Um, we passed in null as the first argument, and now we said null is basically going to center that dialog box on, in, this, uh, in the screen. And we said if we had a program that had multiple dialog boxes, we could specify where to where to position the dialog box. We could, we could position it here. But now we said we'll put a position that dialog box in the center of the screen. So we we're missing that, and that's why the error the error said that. Sometimes the errors the errors don't you know are not specific with what you have to do. But you have to figure it out. So when it said you cannot find a symbol, I, th I was thinking I misspelled this. I wasn't really thinking about it. But this happens to me all the time, although I know this, right? But if you got it, great. If you didn't, then uh, then you know I'm, uh, my my hope is that we we all learn from this, right? But it's this is going to happen from time to time. You know you're going to miss things that you you've done over and over again. All right. So now let's compile this, and there are no errors. So let's run it. And let's see how the so the first of all, the show input dialog works, right? So this message is displayed to us, and it waits for us. See, we notice it waited for us. It doesn't continue over here. Wait for us to type in a response. So when we type in a response, our response is going to be stored here in user response. That's a string, right? We have a string variable that's that's accepting it. Again, whatever user types over here, even if it's a number, it's going to be returned as a string. So type in your name. I'm going to enter K, and hit OK, and now it says K. Now, in this case, all we were displaying was K, right? And the, you can see the dialog box is centered in the screen. All right, so let's add a nice custom message to it and say we can do something like this. Hello, and then have a space. And we can just say hello, K. And then we can concatenate more strings to it and say hello, K. Um, Welcome um, to our program or something like that, our mini program. Oh, sorry. Or, or let's just say, good morning. It's well, it's evening here, right? So let's say, hello, K. Good evening. Simple as that, right? Simple as that. So over here, we can see the string over here was hello. It's the space, and I'm concatenating it with the user's response. That's the name. And I'm concatenating it with a comma, a space, good evening, and a full stop. Compile this, run it, type in my name, K. Okay. Hit enter, and it says, hello, K, good evening. So this morning, I was actually um, logging, in, logging into one of my um, credit card apps, and I was trying to pay one of my bills. And when I logged in, it said, it said, uh, it said, good morning, K. All right. So this morning, I did this morning, right? So it said, good morning, um, Atakagra. That's my, my first name. And so if this is, you know, an, an, an implementation of that, that, just, just that side of it, right? So, you know, we, you know, stuff like this can be useful. <laughs> you know, it can be, it can be useful. Uh, and you'd be surprised that this is the same idea they, they, they did, right? They already have my name. They used my name, they added their own message to it. And, you know, so it, it's all exciting. You know, although it's um, something small, right? But for me, the small things, you know, are, are, are big and great to me. All right, so this is how the um, show input dialog works, and this is how you can kind of mix it. So in the next video, I'll kind of write, we'll kind of write a mini program that uses both um, show input dialog and, sh and show message dialog, just like the way we've done here, but a bit more. Um, and then so we can see um, more of how to you know mix the two, and then we'll see um, more things uh, we, you know we can do. We can do with the Jefferson Paint. All right, so I'm going to hit OK to terminate this. All right, if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then, bye bye.